Hey, what's up, guys? In today's video, we're going to be talking about Fremine, the newest four star character in the second half of Genshin's 4.0 update. In today's video, we're going to be talking about Fremine as a character, his different playstyles, and also his best builds, covering not only my thoughts on him as a character, but also telling you guys the best ways to build and play him, everything you need to know regarding his best artifacts, weapons, teams, how to play him, and also, as I said, my thoughts on him as a character and what you can expect from him. As always, before we begin, I do stream most sites on Twitch. Link in the description if you're interested. And with that being said, let's get right into it. All right, so starting things off, what does Fremine actually do and how do you get the most value out of him? Well, Fremine is a very unique character in the sense that his playstyle is kind of like no other that we've seen, while also having two very distinct builds and playstyles, being either physical or cryo. The reason why he's unique is actually because of his elemental skill, Pressurized Flow, which is an ability that you can use twice. First, you use it once and then it'll set a timer and then you'll enter the press timer state where you have this little penguin counting next to you for 10 seconds, which will change after you cast your skill once. And then every time you normal attack, you will gain one stack starting at zero and going up to four. And then based on how many stacks you're at, you will be at a set level. And then each of those levels will do a different thing. In fact, if you press your skill right away without doing any normal attacks, that will be a level zero second skill press. And then that one will do the highest amount of cryo damage. Whereas if you level it all the way to four by normal attacking, it will do the highest amount of physical damage. Level zero only does cryo. Level four only does physical. And the levels in between will have a balance of cryo and physical damage, two hits. And as you can see, the higher level you are, the more physical damage you're doing and the lower level, the more cryo. In fact, this level zero damage here, even though it doesn't say anything, is actually cryo damage. And the level four one, again, even though it doesn't say anything, is actually physical damage. So depending on your build, depending on your play style, you want to either be doing level zero or level four or maybe somewhere in the middle. But with zero and four being the highest instances of damage for either cryo or physical, respectively. Other properties of your skill that are very important to know are that, first of all, your first hit of your skill will always do a hit of cryo damage. And then up to once every nine seconds, when you use the first hit of your skill, you'll also fire a Spirit Breath Thorn, which is a very small hit of Numa aligned damage, which is very useful against certain Fontaine enemies to help disable their mechanics if the enemies themselves are Usia aligned. Also, after using the first hit of your skill, Fremenet's normal attacks will unleash waves of crowd damage on top of increasing your pressure level with every hit, each normal attack giving you plus one pressure level if you're not in your burst, which we'll talk about very shortly. With these waves of crowd damage having a very low scaling, so pretty negligible, but a bonus amount of cryo that I thought I should mention. Your elemental skills cooldown at a base is 10 seconds. However, in practice, it will be a lot lower than this because of your elemental burst, which is an ability that will greatly reduce your elemental skills cooldown and kind of define his playstyle. In fact, when you use your burst, it will do a pretty decent amount of AoE crowd damage and then will cause you to enter the subnautical hunter mode for 10 seconds. Inside of Fremenet's burst, his elemental skills cooldown will be decreased by 70%, which means that instead of having a 10 second cooldown, it will have a three second one and then it can actually be up to two seconds if you factor in his ascension one passive, which will decrease the cooldown of pressurized flow by one second if it isn't level four. What this means in practice is that regardless of your play style, if you're playing physical or cryo, if you use your elemental burst, you can spam your skill very often. If you are playing him cryo, however, and don't go all the way in leveling in your skills levels and don't go all the way to level four, then your cooldown will actually be decreased by another second, making it two seconds instead of three. This ascension passive just really helps and is really nice when paired with your burst for the cryo build where you want to be spamming your skill at level zero. Now, the reason why, as I said, you can actually get a level four skill with only two normal attacks is because the second part of the burst, which I didn't really mention yet, is one that will make your normal attacks give you two pressure levels of your skill, immediately going from zero to two and then two to four when you're inside of your burst. The second part of your burst, while it will increase kind of both parts of your kit, it's especially nice for a physical build where if you want to get the full four stacks, you now only have to do two normal attacks after using your first skill to immediately get a level four second part of your skill, which means that you can just use your skill, attack twice, and then use your skill again and then rinse and repeat. The second part, increasing your frost damage of your normal attacks, basically doubling them, making them deal 200% of the original damage. While it seems nice on paper for a cryo build, it's really not that important for two reasons. Number one, you typically don't want to be normal attacking in between your skills on a cryo build anyways, unless you're doing some hybrid thing. And second of all, even if you are normal attacking, the scaling of this hit is really small. Frost damage at level nine is 12.2%, which is like really nothing. And so even if it's doubled, it really won't be the biggest deal. Other things you should know are that your burst has a 15 second cooldown with its 10 second duration and also an energy cost of 60. It is also important to know that if you shatter an enemy, your skills damage will be increased by 40% for five seconds, which means that if you run basically a hydro support in your team at any point, you will passively be freezing enemies because from a net will deal cryo damage and then you will shatter them because you're a claymore character, meaning that rocking this basically forgotten reaction of shatter will now just give you a 40% damage buff to the most important part of your kit, which is your skill lasting five seconds and being a really nice bonus and another incentive to running a 
Hydra support alongside Fremine, even if you're not really planning on capitalizing on Freeze. Shatter is typically annoying for Claymore characters as you can't really play a Freeze team because you'll break them out of their Freeze, but for Fremine, it can be a nice bonus amount of skill damage, a reason to run a strong Hydra support like Sing Cho alongside of him to increase your skills damage by 40% when you do proc a Shatter. And lastly, before moving on to his builds, I do want to mention that for his talent priority, first of all, for a crowd build, you want to prioritize your skill and then also level your burst and then leveling your normal attacks last as they're going to be physical. And then for a physical build, you want to level your skill and your normal attack. They're both very important. And then your burst is still worth leveling, but it won't be quite as important. With that in mind, Fremine's best combos are typically as follows. For a cryo build, you want to be using your burst first, which alongside your ascension one passive will make it to where your skill will have a two second cooldown if you use it under level four. And for a cryo build, you want to be using it basically instantly to have the most amount of cryo damage, meaning that your combo is use your burst then use your skill one and then your skill two right after. And then during the downtime of your two second cooldown, which starts after your first hit, by the way. So after your second hit, it should have only like one second left. You can do normal attacks until it's back up and then just rinse and repeat, spam your skill as often as possible. And then only normal attack in the downtime of your skill cast, not in between, as that will make your skill do more physical damage instead of more cryo damage. For a physical build, your combo is going to be pretty much the opposite, where you want to be normal attacking in between your skills, meaning that you still start with your alt, but then you use your skill one. And then in between your skill one and your skill two, you can do two normal attacks, which will increase your burst timer by two with each normal attack, making it level four for your second skill cast, which you will do after two normal attacks. It's also worth noting that if your skill's slightly on cooldown after using the second one, you can usually weave in a normal attack before reusing your skill, as you can animation cancel an N1 into your skill cast for an extra normal attack, which can help proc your rain swords if you're running Sing Cho, and also be a nice bonus of physical damage. Even for a crowd build though, animation canceling a normal attack with a skill is definitely something that you should be doing. Also, some other quick tips I wanted to add are that if your skill's on cooldown before using your burst, it will immediately decrease this cooldown and allow you to use your skill pretty much instantly. And I also don't want to remind you that your skill's cooldown does start when you use your first cast. So if you press your E and then wait a bit and then E again, the cooldown already started from the initial hit and not the second one. Now, with the combos out of the way, I want to give you guys my thoughts on Fremine as a character. First of all, the design of his kit I find very interesting. I think he has two unique playstyles, a very unique elemental skill, and is a fun character gameplay wise. With that in mind, you do have to realize that very honestly, his damage is not that high. His skillings are not amazing. And while you can make him work, and I have cleared the abyss with him, this is mostly done thanks to very powerful off-field supports and reactions who can synergize very well with him. Because of that, you can make him work and he can have some synergies with, for example, a Hyperbloom team where, yes, it's a three unit core that can function without him, often consisting of very broken supports in general, a strong Hydro unit, a strong Electro unit, and a strong Dendro one, but one where Fremine's kit actually has synergy with in the sense of one, he wants a normal attack so he can enable characters like Sing Cho or even Fischl, but two, his kit wants supports of those elements anyways. In fact, he wants to be ran with a Hydro character in either a Cryo or a Physical team because of his Ascension 4 passive that will give him more damage when he shatters. So even though shatter is generally a bad reaction, you do want to shatter with him. So you want to run him with a Hydro support. And then if you're playing him Physical, you also want an Electro support to proc Superconduct, which will decrease the physical resistance of enemies and make him a stronger physical carry. At that point, while you can technically play him as a hyper carry, you already have a cryo, hydro, and electro character. So adding a dendro as a last slot is kind of a no brainer. There's not really much you're losing from it. And you can not only have a good unit as your last slot, but also an amazing and broken reaction with hyper bloom. While this team can function without Fermine, and there can be definitely a better last slot, Fermine can be an on field driver, having okay personal damage, but not the greatest, while also allowing your team to proc hyper bloom and your off field supports to carry you. Outside of that, though, you can also just run a flexible last slot alongside a Hydro and Electro support or play him in a Freeze slash Shatter team where he can also get value as a Cryo DPS. We'll cover more of this in the team section, but I do have to admit that through my personal findings, I do like him a lot in a physical team. And at that point, since you're already procking Superconduct and Shatter, the last slot being a Dendro character is oftentimes just a good option, but more on this in the team section. And I do at least want to mention that other teams where he's just a physical carry or just a Cryo carry can work as well. Or technically in a Reverse Melt team, although you do need to keep in mind that both hits of a skill do share the same internal cooldown. So if you are reverse melting, you will typically only be melting half of his skills, like the first one and then not the second, unless you're waiting, which isn't optimal, making it to where there's definitely better cryo options in a reverse melt team, although he can technically be a viable one. Lastly, I want to say that in a hyper bloom team, while you can play him physical or cryo, physical is more incentivized here, not necessarily because it's better, but more so because you're going to be normal attacking more, which will line up better with your Sing Cho or Yalan's elemental bursts, which will apply hydro on your normal attacks. On top of that, in a Hyperbloom team, the Electro will proc Superconduct alongside
inside your Feminae's Cryo, which will also have a bit of synergy with Dendro, being how these elements interact with one another, as well as being good for Feminae's personal damage, once again, thanks to Superconduct, using him as your on-field character. Overall, as I said, power level-wise, not the best, but fun, in my opinion. I do enjoy his playstyle a lot. Just keep in mind that he's not anything that's going to shatter your expectations. That was cringe. I'm sorry. With that in mind, to talk about how you want to build Feminae, as we saw, it will very clearly depend on which playstyle you choose, with each playstyle having a pretty distinct but straightforward build path. In fact, for your artifact sets, if you want to play from an A in a cryo build, there's a few sets you can choose from. First of all, the four piece Blizzard Trayer is a potential best in slot set for your Fremine if you can maintain its uptime. This set will give you 15% cryo damage bonus and 20% crit rate against opponents affected by cryo, which is already good enough to make it a very strong set. The problem is, you obviously won't get the additional 20% crit rate, at least for the most part, because you only get this when the opponents are frozen, and while you can freeze enemies, since Fremine is a Claymore character, he will shatter them and unfreeze them, which means that most of the time you'll only have 20 crit rate and 15 crowd damage, which is still enough to make it your general best in slot for a cryo build. Another great option I wanted to mention is the four piece golden troop. Golden troop is great because it'll give you 45% skill damage just for free. And as we know, Fremine's skill is the vast majority of his damage. With that in mind, since Fremine is a character who wants to be on field for a while, you won't really be able to make use of the additional 25% skill damage that is cleared when you take field for more than two seconds. And so while you may be able to get this bonus for a quick skill as soon as you swap in, in general, this set will only be able to give you that 45% skill damage, which is still enough to make it a great option, even if, once again, you can't make use of its full effect. Generally speaking, for a cryo from Ine, though, those are the main two options, Blizzard Strayer or Golden Troop, or mix and matching 2p sets, any of the offensive ones that can give you useful stats. Also worth noting that in a reverse Mel team, you can also go for the 4p Slava Walker if you have a good pyro uptime on enemies. Moving on for your physical build now, it is very straightforward. Just go for Pale Flame. It is by far the best set for you because it gives you 50% physical damage and also up to 18% attack, and it has a very consistent uptime because Fremine is going to be spamming his skill anyways. Other good options though include mix and matching two pieces, like you can go two pale flame with two bloodstained or any of the attack percent two pieces, and they can be fine options, although they are quite strictly worse than pale flame, which is what I recommend for the most part. Now with that out of the way, for the stats you're looking for in your Fremine, it is very straightforward. Again, it will depend on your playstyle, but you just want to be maximizing your damage, which means going for the following stats. First of all, having enough energy recharge to spam your burst on cooldown to allow you to spam your skill way more efficiently and do way, way more damage, which means that having enough ER is going to be crucial. With that in mind, Fremine's exact ER amounts vary heavily based on his team, rotation, and playstyle, so keep in mind that this can vary for you, but a general range to go for would be around 130 to 160 ER. I have been playing him on the lower end, but I do acknowledge that a lot of teams, especially without Favonius supports, may need a bit more than that, so do test out what works for you. Once you have enough ER though, the main things you want to be looking for to increase your damage are going to be crit rate, crit damage, and attack percent. This goes for both a cryo and a physical build as the best stats for you. Because of this, you want to look for attack percent on your sands, crit rate or crit damage on your circlet, and then for your goblet, either crowd damage bonus in a cryo build or physical damage bonus in a physical build. Do keep in mind that attack percent can technically be a viable goblet, especially if you have a lot of damage percent on things like Serpent Spine and maybe don't have a good cryo or physical goblet yet, then you can for sure use an attack goblet in the meantime, but I do highly recommend going for either cryo or physical on your goblet once you have a good one. Also regarding elemental mastery, while it can in theory be fine for reverse melt teams, you do have to keep in mind that Fremine's melt consistency is not that great. Both hits of his skill share the same internal cooldown, which means if you melt the first hit and then you use your skill right after, it's not going to melt against the same target unless you wait a while. So typically I don't recommend EM as much as attack. And regarding shatter, even though you want to shatter on Fremine, the damage of the shatter reaction itself is so low that building elemental mastery for that is not recommended when compared to building crit or attack percent as it won't be as efficient. Because of that, just focus for the basics. I highly recommend an attack percent sense, looking for crit on all of your substats alongside attack percent and however much energy recharge you need. Also keep in mind that an energy recharge sense can be viable if you don't have enough on your substats and desperately need some to get your burst back. Now moving on for Fremine's weapons, again, it's really straightforward. Any of the good claymores are going to be good on Fremine because he just wants good stats. He wants the standard crit, attack, and maybe even some energy recharge that pretty much any carry wants, which means that the generic good claymores are also going to be good for him. His best four star option, which is honestly at the level of five stars and sometimes even better, especially with refinements, is going to be the Serpent Spine, the Battle Pass one, if you have it, as one that gives you so much more damage, provided you can stack it up and make use of its effect. Similarly, all of the offensive five star options are great for Fremine, with the best ones being Beacon of the Reed Sea, Song of Broken Pines, and Skyward Pride. Beacon gives you a lot of crit rate and an effect that you can actually make use of, giving you just a lot of attack. Song of Broken Pines is mostly for a physical build, as it will give you physical damage bonus, but it also gives you a super high base attack and some attack speed, which can be nice. Skyward Pride can be a pretty amazing option 
if you can make use of the ER, as this effect will give you quite a lot of just bonus damage, some additional scalings of attack percent that will just damage opponents as you're attacking on top of the ER that it gives you and the high base attack. And Skyward Pride can oftentimes actually just straight up be his best in slot because of the vacuum blades, the damage, and also the ER, which is very valuable for Fremine. Other good stack sticks are Wolf's Gravestone, Unforged, and also Redhorn, all of which being great five star options for both physical and cryo Fremine. For your force options, here's where it can vary a little bit more in the sense that, first of all, your Servant Spine is always going to be just the best four star option, provided you can make use of its stats. But for your best free to play option, you actually can craft quite a few good ones at the Blacksmith. The new Tidal Shadow that came with Fontaine is going to be your good generalistic option, giving you a lot of attack percent and an additional amount when you are healed, which means it's great if you have a healer on your team. For a physical build, Snow Tomb Star Silver can also be really good as the effect can actually give you quite a bit of bonus damage against cryo affected enemies, provided you can consistently proc it and the effect doesn't decide to just randomly miss. Prototype Archaic can also be a good stat stick, giving you an extra instance of damage as well. Tidal Shadow is the more consistent just attack stat stick, but Archaic and Snow Tomb are also great, with Snow Tomb mainly being recommended, obviously, if you can make use of its physical stat. Overall, any of these free to play options or Serpent Spine, if you buy the Battle Pass or any of the five stars, are going to be good offensive stats stat sticks for your Fremine that he can make use of. I do also want to take the time to emphasize before moving on that weapons that give you extra instances of damage like Skyward Prize Vacuum Blades are especially good on a character with relatively low scalings like Fremine, where getting more will obviously help you a lot. On top of the fact that Skyward Pride can just give you ER, fulfill your energy needs, and have a very high base attack, so it's one of my overall favorites for him. But all of the options that I mentioned for him are great ones, so you can use whichever one you have. Also, before moving on, I did really quickly want to mention that if you're very energy hungry on him, you can go one of the are claymores like fab or sack to help your team out with energy as well but this obviously will hurt his personal damage greatly so it's not what i typically recommend but it can be viable for your team moving on for fremine's constellations they're actually pretty okay his first one will give him 15 crit rate to his elemental skill which again is a big part of his damage so a pretty nice first constellation second one will give you some more energy not the most but two energy after using the second hit of your skill or three if it's level four with your third talent increasing your normal attack levels which is very unique to him and Linny, and your fifth one increasing your skills talent levels, which is even more relevant as again, that's a big part of your damage. Fremine's fourth constellation will give him up to 18% attack as long as he's triggering Frozen Shatter or Superconduct, which should be happening anyways. So a free 18% attack. And then his C6 constellation will basically be the same thing, but instead of giving you attack when you trigger these reactions, it will give you crit damage up to 36%, which again is a nice amount of bonus damage, which means that his constellations will make him a bit more quote unquote complete as a carry, but he's still obviously not going to be meta defining, just more damage and energy overall. All right, now moving on for Fremine's best teams, let's talk about how you want to be building them. First of all, as I mentioned earlier in the video, I highly recommend running Fremine with a Hydro character to proc Shatter, get some freezes in, and then Shatter them, giving his elemental skill 40% more damage thanks to his Ascension passive. Because of this, a Hydro support like Synchro or Yalan, who can fire off their Rain Arrows or Rain Swords alongside your normal attacks, is usually going to be a really good option. You can run a slower Hydro character like a Hydro Healer, and that can be fine, but typically this off-field bonus damage with Synchro Yalan is going to be a great choice. After that, you want to run an Electro character if you are playing him in a physical team so that you can proc Superconduct as well, reducing the physical resistance of enemies, while also oftentimes being a strong option like Electro characters in general are usually just pretty good, so you can run an Electro support like Fischl with Fremine or Kuki if you're planning on playing Hyperbloom. In fact, your last slot, once you have these two for a physical team, is going to be very flexible, and while you can technically run an offensive support to let you play a hyper carry Fremine, a team. As I said, because his scalings aren't the highest, this won't be as recommended as running him in, for example, a Hyperbloom team, where your last slot can still be a pretty good character, but a Dendro one that will also allow you to proc Hyperbloom. You can proc Shatter and Superconduct to buff your Fremine's damage, and then also just passively get Hyperblooms, which makes your team much, much stronger because of this overpowered reaction. Example of last slots in a physical team for Fremine include characters like Shenha, Beto, Yulon, Mika, or even Bennett, all of which can actually be fine to give Fremine, a decent, mostly single target and pretty strong physical team. Whereas again, obviously Hyperbloom is broken because it's Hyperbloom, but you can definitely get away with a physical team even without it if you don't want to run a Dendro character. In general though, as a physical unit, I do recommend just this core of Hydro and Electro supports and then a flexible option at the end. Keep in mind that in a team like this, a Cryo Fremine build can work as well. It's just that your normal attacks won't line up as well with Sync Cho's Rain Swords as you won't be normal attacking as much. And you also lose out on the value of Superconduct, but you can just play Cryo for cryo if that's what you want. For a cryo from a build, the teams I would recommend are typically shatter or freeze teams where you can freeze the enemies with a hydro support, run another cryo battery who also will have good crowd damage, and then increase your crowd damage thanks to an 
Nemo support on the Verdes and Venerer set. This is a pretty standard freeze team, but Fremine will obviously proc Shatter as well, thanks to the fact that he's a Claymore character, which will also help him proc his passive. Your options here are incredibly flexible. You could run a generic team like one you'd run with Ayaka or something, a strong cryo support. There really are so many options for each slot here. Uh, there's a bunch of cryo options you can use. Chong Yoon can help you infuse your normal attacks with cryo, but you could also use other strong supports like, for example, Shenha, Rosaria, Kaya, Layla, pretty much anyone. Same with Hydro, any of the Hydro supports we mentioned, and the same thing can be applied with Anemo. Now, keep in mind, you may want a healer since your freeze uptime won't be that good, but if you don't need one, a team like this can be perfect. And if you want a healer, you can go for a healer or shielder in pretty much any slot. Character like Jean works fine. Kokomi can work as well for your Hydro. And you could also go someone like Diona or Layla instead of Shenha for Cryo. Overall, I do recommend this type of team, though, generally speaking, for a Cryo build. As while the other reaction you can proc, being Melt, is technically viable, I do think that other Cryo characters in a Reverse Melt team that can quick swap more are much stronger here and make the team feel much more comfy as someone who has played Fremine in Reverse Melt quite a bit. Personally, I think both of his play styles, both Cryo in a Shatter team or Physical in a Superconduct and Shatter team, are very viable, with my personal recommendation being a Physical Fremine. Overall, Fremine is definitely a character. Uh, I do think his design and his play style is really cool, very creative, very unique, and one that I genuinely enjoy, but I do have to admit that that his personal damage is really not that high. I do still enjoy him though, and I hope that this guide was helpful and helped you guys build him and get a lot of value out of him. I do really like his penguin, I think it's adorable, and yeah, cool character, different play styles. I was initially planning on putting a showcase in this video, but I'm trying to just include these clips, showcase clips, throughout the video as I talk, as I notice it's already getting quite long, and Fremine's showcases, especially in this abyss, is mostly just the off-field supports and reaction damage doing most of the work, and I don't want to make this video any longer than it has to be. Overall, I really hope you guys enjoyed, I hope this video was helpful, and if there's anything I want to add it will be in a pinned comment with that being said thanks so much for watching excuse the delay in this video as i have been feeling a little bit sick recently but i'm doing better and i will be uploading official guides soon as well so stay tuned for that once again i hope this video was helpful thanks so much for watching and as always i'll catch you guys in the next one peace